Junana Boda in Ali and Pia Besa Zadi Farming Sulajoni Siso. We want to invest on a Pamboda Ju today. Come on, to the part and baby, fertilizer. Yeah. Sponsorship. So the biggest factors um, impacting youth employment in rural Kenya is one, access to land. Big challenge for the youth to access land. We just did a re recent study with Dalberg and many of the youth were talking about complaining the fact that um, yeah, some of them would like to participate in productive agriculture, but access to land is minimal. Most of their parents own the land. The other issue is access to finance. Youth do not have a track record of employment, of work, and hence um, commercial um, financial institutions find it a challenge to actually provide them with access to loans and credit. The majority of rural counties struggle with youth unemployment and underemployment. What I faced in the border, border, you find there are days that they, there's no money. You find the customers you have to carry, they are few. And now, let's stay like a day like Friday, so market day to us. As a farmer, I, in my sales, in my, when I do my calculations, I find the benefits more higher. The cash I get in the border, border for one week. When the rest see me in my farming, they want to do it, but they are not able to do it because of lack of money to begin the business. Youth underemployment is a predominantly rural phenomenon, while unemployment is an urban one. And when you talk about attitudes, that's a broad factor. In our recent research, we had four archetypes of youth. So there are those youth who are progressive, who are looking towards actually participating in agricultural work. And then there are those who see agricultural work as manual labor, it's dirt in the ground. So their attitude towards actual productive work uh, or production work in farms is negative. However, they would be interested in doing work in the value addition chains. And there's a big concerted effort towards looking at how do we start to change some of those attitudes. We believe that technology would start to make farming look a lot more interesting um, to youth farmers. We know that uh, the main uh, sector in this country is agriculture and we've been progressively seeing the age of the people who are getting involved in agriculture getting younger and younger but young people are beginning to take an interest and with the size of the sector in this country it, it's imperative then that we also engage the largest demographic to actually participate so we are working also with different partners to figure out how can we create uh, empowerment models that then will help them to be able to create an income out of farming. Agreed. Africa role in simulating the, the economy is uh, to assist the small and large scale farmers to revelate their yields through soil analysis whereby we are able to advise on the good agricultural practices, the best fertilizers and agrochemicals to apply on their farms. Also we engage the jobless youth, the women, the youth the girls who have ample time in their homes to establish high-value tree citrix nurseries, which is able to give them an income. In aggregation, we are seeing more and more youth getting involved, but they tend to want to be involved more as the middleman, which is the quick, quick win, not necessarily as the producer. And I think it's a matter of time you'll start seeing them switching from being the middleman starting to go now to the producers. For financial institutions in the, in the short term, they need to be able to build capabilities, uh, very deliberate initiatives to support the youth be able to participate. Having, you know, clinical sessions and, and trainings so that the youth then know how to engage with these financial institutions. I think credit providers across the country, especially those who are really focused on working with the youth. In the short term, I believe they should be equipping the youth with the financial literacy, specifically targeting financial management, especially given the current uh, environment where there's a lot of easy money, specifically with the advent of the digital credit. Uh, you add to it the betting craze within the country so I believe most of the youth should get educated in terms of what really helps them. What we do at the college, we train young people in agribusiness. Uh, we train them how to farm without soil. And simply what that means, we can grow food anywhere, 
in the country, in the arid areas, uh, in the cities, uh, in areas where people have, there's too much concentration of, of, of uh, population, there, that means there's no land uh, to, to farm. Uh, and therefore it makes land almost irrelevant because all we need is space. My dream personally is to start a ranch in one of the areas around Kenya, maybe Nyahururu. I think hydroponics, it's a cheaper way of farming because you just only need water to farm. I've just finished Form 4 last year and I'm here doing agriculture. And what drives me to do these things is that for the people who are out there, as in they can get better food without having to pay more. Well-diversified economies allow sectors to strengthen one another and create additional employment opportunities. Four areas of focus for fostering economic diversity. Strengthening a variety of sectors in rural areas. Ensuring a systems-based approach to economic diversification. Strengthening regional economic hubs through engagement from the county government. Preparing the young workforce. Ideally, if there is agro-processing, you will convert that, to that tomato into tomato paste. So agro-processing becomes very critical because it allows us to have multiple uses of a produce. You know, as it is now, you know, you look at a tomato and you think, I just have to buy the tomato as is. But if you are able to add value to the tomato, if you are able to process it, I make sure, because I am in the agro-processing business, I no longer lose the grade twos and three. I no longer give them to the cows. You know, that's what you see in the village where you have a surplus. When you have a surplus, you find cows eating carrots. If we are going to encourage agro-processing, we have to encourage the production of more of the raw materials that they're processing. So other efforts have to complement those. And also the multiplicity of use of the products that we are, we are producing. That allows us now to start now potentially creating other avenues of jobs and, uh, and entrepreneurship that we have not even started to touch. Agpo supported businesses as in the youth because when I got in the government and I had the certificate, I used to get into your office, I explain myself, you ask me about my profile, I give you my profile, you find out I'm an Agpo, the youth are given the 30% share of their works in Makueni. So the 30%, it's a lot of money. So we, we work and we get money and we get profit. The call for action is actually just to coordinate and work together with each other. People that are working in this space need to understand what each other is doing and what is working. What needs to be scaled up, for instance, is it something worth scaling up? So a way of highlighting the best practice out there and scaling it up. What more can be done? How can we ensure rural economies both strengthen activities along the agriculture value chain and develop non-farming sectors in a robust and sustainable way? How can we ensure the enabling environment in rural economies is conducive to economic diversification? How can we design and implement rural economic interventions that address the entire ecosystem? How can we identify geographies where early interventions would be most effective? How can devolution support the development of targeted and appropriate approaches for the population? How do we ensure rural youth are prepared with the skills necessary for them to perform in the jobs available? Mm -hmm.